Hello. everybody. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, we're still fixing some stuff. Are you catching Pokemon again? No, <laughs> <laughs> I was muting my phone. <laughs> they always tend to call me during the stream. So Eric just bent our bot. Yeah, we had so <laughs> sometimes other right. officers uh, like USA team uh, is uh, doing also some live streams, and they had a, a bot with a uh, with a giveaway which was already uh, expired, so no need to have it running. So right. you just bent a night bot. <laughs> bent our own night bot. <laughs> no access to that one. Uh. Oh, welcome everybody. So welcome my name welcome. is Eric, and I'm Mike. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Good to see you. Like last week. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And like next week. Next week again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next week again, indeed. Uh, so yeah, Peter is on holiday, so uh, uh, we can play with all the new uh, stuff, uh, like uh, this uh, And graphics cards, that's usually GPU. Peter's cup of tea, but yeah. uh, today it's us with a graphics card. Lucky us. Um, we have a giveaway, Mike. Yes, if you go to msr.com slash two slash insider, um, there you can participate in our giveaway. We're giving away several Steam Wallet codes. If you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, uh, you can also follow the direct link to Gleam that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. So make sure to participate. You only have to sign up once and then you will be automatically included in the next drawings as well, in case you don't win the first time, that is, of course. Yeah, most people win the first time, don't worry. Easily. <laughs> <laughs> Beginner's luck, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. So, uh, yeah, a few weeks ago we uh, did a live stream about the uh, GeForce RT NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 8 Geek. Today it's the non-TI version, which is this really small card. It's, it's uh, so cute. It's it's almost cute, yeah. Because this is perfect for mini ITX. If we compare it with last generation, it's this is the uh, 3060, 12 gig. And I mean, yeah. Okay, this is a three fan. This is a two fan. Uh, but also, if you uh, compare how thick they are or how thin this one is, actually, as you put it like this, then it's a bit better to see. That's a big difference, indeed. Yeah, it's a big difference. So that's what we're going to talk today about. Um, let me first maybe talk a little bit about the, the RTX 4060 uh, GPU. Um, so we're not going into all the, the, the small uh, specs uh, because the GPU is different. It has less um, uh, a smaller render engine, let's say like that. Uh, so of course pricing. Uh, we only included Euro pricing here. Uh, US dollar pricing is $299 uh, for the that's the MSRP model. Yeah. Uh, of course, there will all, always be uh, other designs uh, like an MSI's case. Uh, later we will show you the gaming card. Uh, overclocked models and I don't know some vendors put displays on it you get a free cat with it I don't know what they all do and all games maybe um, so 329 euro uh, that's uh, it will uh, be available tomorrow so today is the launch date for the MSRP date uh, so that was one hour ago you will see a lot of reviews popping up in the coming hours and tomorrow is the non MSRP review date so i'm sure some websites will also have some reviews of uh, uh, the non-msrp models uh the nvidia changed this with the uh, 4060 uh, not sure why they did it um i don't like it i mean you probably they want more attention for the msrp models uh, i would also prefer to have them all at once so you get a broader yeah. view immediately yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's good that, that now uh, everything is uh, available tomorrow, so you still have time to, because probably tomorrow also at 3 o'clock, I would say, same like today. Yeah, probably. Not our live stream, but uh, uh, when the reviews will go live. Yeah. Central Europe, 3 yeah. o'clock. Uh, so <laughs> memory basically is the same, but NVIDIA already announced that uh, somewhere in July, yeah, that's, I mean, that's probably next week or uh, four weeks later, we don't know yet, uh, somewhere in July there will also be a uh, uh, 4060 16 geek and I already see the first typing mistake you see we just fix it on the fly right Mike <laughs> and the 16 gig model has 12 <laughs> yeah yeah that's better it's uh, maybe copy uh, uh, based uh, mistake uh, so this one has uh, uh, all have G DDR6 so it's not 6x which for example you can find on the uh, RTX uh, 4070, which is a higher bandwidth. Uh, memory bus, all the same, 128-bit. And, you know, 
I see a lot of people complaining about this. This, this was, I think, 20 years ago. It's the, the same people. Oh, this is 192 or 256, and this only 128. I would advise just look at the uh, pure performance. That's yeah. what's important. <coughs> uh, these are all small details. However, one interesting detail is the uh, total GPU uh, power. The, the, uh, in watts, it's only 115 watts. So, and that's uh, a big difference compared to the 160 uh, for the 4060 Ti. Or, now we'll talk later about that, uh, idle power, 7, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, nowadays it's small. I mean, last generation idle used to be a bit more. Uh, let's compare these to their direct competitors. Uh, later we will do benchmarks today, we have the cards. I'm not going to take one apart because I have a separate PCB here, so no risk for uh, Peter. <laughs> or FEE from who uh, we borrowed the card. Um, if you look to the direct competitors, basically we look one and two generations uh, uh, before this one. So we have the 3060, and it's a little bit of mess over there because you had the 3060 8 gig and you have the 12 gig uh, because they had uh, different versions. Also for the uh, so the original model is the the 12 gig, and later on Nvidia also launched an 8 yeah. gig. For indeed. <coughs> uh, let me see the check. And for the 2060, it's the other way around. They first had a 6 gig version and then they also launched a 12 gig version. Yeah, and this, you know, most times it's reacting on AMD, filling gaps, um, having some old GPUs, they, they rebatch, uh, or having some silicon they, they need to uh, yeah, put on the market. So, yeah, it's always a little bit. Uh, you know, in the beginning, a, a lineup always starts f clean and fresh. But after a few generations and competition, and this year we also, yeah, I don't want to say we have competition from uh, Intel in the high-end segment, but this is the uh, segment where they also have some competition. Um, yeah, you know, people are going to react, they're going to introduce new SKUs, clock speeds, uh, memory bins, uh, you name it. Um, I think the, okay, memory is a big difference. Uh, later we'll, we'll look a, a bit more in, in uh, performance. So memory is a big difference, uh, the, the size of the memory, and uh, nowadays this is important because most of those, especially the, the, the console games which are ported to PCs, PC platform, the performance is quite clear and they, they, they use a, a quite clear. Quite poor. Quite poor, <laughs> indeed. And they Badly use optimized it. usually. Yeah, they're not optimized, so mm. uh, they use a lot of memory. Um, we we, we were trying to show that. Uh, we were preparing a bit, but the game kept crashing. So not sure if we yeah, will show that. Yeah, we're trying a bit with Hogwarts Legacy, but I think we're using a like a, an early driver today, and that yeah. one was still struggling with uh, with it a bit. But we still have some more demonstration in other games, so we, we still have some yeah. stuff running. And you can, I mean, you can uh, ask us in the chat what benchmarks to run. Uh, we have several games installed, uh, so yeah. you can choose what resolution. Solo 911 is asking, what are the consequences of using an eight gigabyte card on new games that require 16 gigabyte recommended, like Starfield? I don't know specifically for Starfield. Yeah, it's too um, early to tell. Yeah, but usually it very much depends on the, the settings. You can, of course, Run no, slightly lower settings. This is what it says, textures. recommended. Doesn't yeah. mean it will not run on less, but recommended is for the uh, best game experience. And nowadays for uh, uh, recent games, this also the requirement for the GPU is quite high. Not only the memory, but also the yeah. GPU. Because they're thinking about uh, ray tracing uh, and all the fancy stuff to, to make the look uh, of the game uh, look great. So, yeah, sometimes I'm like, uh, whoa, they're asking a lot. And like, if you look at other games that, that are very VRAM intensive, so then I'm thinking like Hogwarts Legacy, for example, there you also see that, that it's specifically 8 gigabyte cards struggle when you enable ray tracing. But I think in the first place, ray tracing is not really what the 4060 is made for. Of course, it can do it, um, but it's a lot more limited than with the higher end cards. So if you want to do ray tracing, higher resolutions, then I don't think the 4060 in general is the, is the correct card for you. Yeah. Um, but with ray tracing off, so just the rasterization performance, it, it runs fine and within the 8 gigs uh, of RAM. Yeah, so Sarge T is also saying 8 uh, gigabytes VRAM, uh, VRAM is squeezing, huh? if you want, especially if you want to Very run it much depends on the game. Higher settings at 4040p, yeah. yeah. It's depends. usually like the, the console ports that uh, Eric mentioned, they tend to struggle when you're limited on VRAM. Um, on the other hand, like eSports titles, they're usually very well optimized. So they, they run perfectly fine on cards like these. So it all depends on what you want to do. Do you want to play a lot of um, 
triple A titles, maybe ported from consoles, then you might want to go for a card with more VRM just to be safe because of the, the optimization that is lacking. Yeah. If you're playing a lot of esports titles, Counter Strike, Rocket League, Valorant, what else do we have? Um, League of Legends, all those kind of games. Of course, you can run a very high uh, FPS. They they will not run into any VRM issues either. So. so I think that is a, a good remark from uh, Skeet Sir. He is asking, how are they uh, putting 16 gigabyte on 128 bit? You're talking about this number. I assumed it's 128 bit. Because I could not get official confirmation, I believe. Maybe I found it in the end. Um, Isn't that online yet? No, yeah, I, I, I checked the uh, video website. I think this one, maybe I found it in the end. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have put it here or Let left it check. empty with a question mark. Um, but yeah, it, it's basically the 46 Ti. Oh, Mike is uh, checking online. Uh, yeah, really that's checking. why we assumed it, Mike, because on the NVIDIA website, it's only for both the, uh, what is it, uh, the 8 gig and the 16 gig, it says 128 bit. Yeah, but it can be. Technically, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, looking at the NVIDIA website, it looks indeed 128 bit, so I think it's correct. Indeed. So uh, let's uh, jump uh, back to this table. So memory, big difference compared to uh, previous generations, uh, depending on the GPU. Uh, I mean, some even have six. Um, memory usage. So we will, uh, today we have a, a power meter here. Mike, can you show that one? Yes. In the main cam. So this one, like I think last week, and we have this. And I, I you know, it lo looks so something like on a barbecue. <laughs> You grab your meat with this? Pac-Man? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to do my best with this. I never used it, so... Yeah, we actually decided to bring this one because the well, we do our monitoring, our software monitoring with uh, hardware info, but currently the, the idle power is still a little bit bugged for this card, so probably that's still in the, the early driver that we're using that is not fully uh, uh, working with hardware info yet, so in order to show a bit of the power draw and idle, we can use this instead, so we can measure the cable. Still, it doesn't tell the full story because it also draws a bit of power out of the PCI Express slot, but at least it gives a, a little bit of an indication of what it will do in idle. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at the table. Uh, 4060 uh, also has third and fourth generation uh, RT and, and tensor cores, like, you know, this is technical spec, so in the end it just matters how much performance you get from it. Uh, so generation doesn't mean anything. Um, this is interesting DLSS. Uh, this uh, supports uh, generation 3. And of course, Nvidia's story is uh, that they can support generation 3 with um, frame generation because of the, I think it's a tensor cores. So that's why you need a new generation. But uh, yeah, there are rumors that it might also work on previous generation, like with a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, probably this is better optimized. Uh, where the uh, RTX 30 series had uh, DLSS uh, 2.0 yeah. or 2. And, I believe uh, most of the other features are basically the same, right? I think it's additional yeah. frame generation. Yeah, indeed, 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 indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And for that, they need the tensor cores. And then uh, we will also dive a bit deeper into this. Uh, this also has the 8th gen. Um, NVENC, uh, the NVIDIA uh, encoder, uh, which is built in, and that one uh, can also do AV1 encoding. So today we will uh, have a video file, we will encode it in different formats and uh, show you the efficiency of that. And uh, that also makes this card interesting, I believe, because this is now the, like by far the cheapest card on the market that absolutely. has this new encoder. Yeah, and it's not only for uh, uh, encoding videos, but also for live streams and yes. YouTube. Still beta, but it supports AV1 streaming. We're not using it, uh, but yeah, uh, at lower bit rates you will get, uh, well, we get later into I'll that, but you get much better quality. Yeah. Um, talk about the models we have today. So, if you remember our RTX uh, 4060 Ti live stream, you remember we had two fan models and three fan models. Now we only have two fan models. Last time I already explained, probably the lower we go, the more fans we will you we will lose. Yeah. Um, so we have two uh, different series. We have the on the right side you see the uh, 4060 Ventus 2X two fans black, eight gig, and on the left side that's you see the, the one you have in front of you. Yeah, that's this one indeed. 
And on the other side, uh, we have the uh, gaming, RTX 4060 Gaming uh, X for the overclock model and the uh, Gaming 8 Geek normal. So, um, yeah, uh, each of the cards has two versions, one overclocked version, you can recognize it for the Ventus Black on the OC in the end of the, on the name. And gaming has an X before the memory. It's a bit inconsistent. I don't like it, but yeah, we're already doing it for years. So then better continue with it, right? Yes. It's better to always have like an X or OC and then behind the memory or before the memory. Um, yeah, and, and why do we still put the memory there? Well, you see still some GPUs will later launch. We learned from the past. We'll later launch with a different memory size, either more or less. And then you need to have this in the marketing name, otherwise... We also um, saw this like for the 3080, for example. We yeah. saw with the 3060 that we just talked about. Yeah, indeed. Uh, 46 should have been 4050. Well, 4050 can still come, right? And 4060 Ti should have been 4060, yeah? Yeah. So that is maybe, we, we will uh, run some benchmarks. Uh, that's maybe what you would expect. Normally, when NVIDIA launches a new GPU, you expect the performance of previous GPU, but one tier higher. Yeah, it's also what Mr. Mestrax mentioned earlier. Yeah. 3060 was as fast as 2070, but 4060 not as fast as 3070. That's correct. Yeah, and uh, it uses a lot less power. Uh, power. Uh, the, yeah. the, the ball power is 115 watt, and it's not, not even uh, consuming that. Well, we didn't see that, Mike, right? 115. Yeah? Uh, slightly below. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So. Uh, the more power you add, probably the faster it can run, the higher clock speeds can uh, run. But then, you know, they have different GPUs. Um, also, if you look at their price strategy, they have gaps between the pricing. It used to, a long time ago, it used to be 40 or 50 US dollar. <laughs> now it's 120, 130, 140, you know, the, the gaps are getting uh, uh, bigger. I think because, you, especially like in the lower segment, you had like smaller gaps, but now yeah. even in the lower segment, I believe the 4060 is 299 US dollar. Well, in the past, if you have a GPU of Ti like 600 U euros or US dollar, you had like a, like a high-end model. Yeah. And now it's, uh, I don't want to say entry level, but mid-range. You need to pay yeah, almost double, much, yeah. like 1200 uh, for a decent high-end. So yeah, times changed. No RGB at all. Well, how the gaming models do. Let me uh, go a bit more in detail. So this is the gaming. Today we cannot uh, show you this one in uh, real life. I have it here. Mike. Yeah. Sneak peek, sneak peek. Sneak peek, <laughs> but yeah, not allowed to show you uh, because that NDA is for tomorrow. Uh, so, I, you know, the NDA from a video was not really 100% clear, but I'm never taking risks. So, so that's we're sticking why to the Ventus today? But there will yeah. also be a gaming model. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. So uh, the, uh, there are a few differences later. I will uh, talk about it. But this um, gaming model, like I already said, two models, the overclock model and no model, of no overclock model, the standard uh, clock speeds. Uh, zero frozer basically means if your uh, fin fans are spinning, this is not a game model, but uh, if the fans are spinning and it uh, reaches certain temperature, I don't know on this, mo this model what the temperature is, uh, let's say 40, 50 degrees, then the fans will stop spinning. So that way you also get zero noise out of yeah, your graphics. indeed, that's what I want to add. Yeah, uh, yeah they both come with a backplate. So this one, uh, the Ventus Black has a, a plastic backplate. This is still an, an early model, by the way. So the backplate on the eventual model will be slightly different than what yeah, you see here. We this always, is still an yeah, engineering pe Most sample. people know, we always get engineering models. Yeah. And maybe I can, can I show, nah, I'm not going to show you the gaming one. I want to show the backplate over there. Uh, but that one has a, uh, um, what is it? Magnesium uh, alloy uh, backplate, so a metal backplate. Um, both have thermal paddings. Uh, basically it means on the memory and the GPU. From here you cannot uh, see it, uh, but you would have see that here. Uh, between the heat sinks and the GPUs, uh, you have thermal padding uh, that it uh, better connects. Um, both have a customized PCB and actually it uses the same PCB. And I have that one here. So this is the PCB used for the Ventus Black and for the gaming model. And later you will also see, I think in, in two or three slides, um, that there is not much uh, difference. Uh, so except we're using different components. And you see that here. Uh, for the VRM. 
on the gaming model because that one uses uh, DR Moss, Dr. Moss, here as well. So sometimes they can switch out components uh, for better quality components, which... Uh, I think for this one it's identical. The Dr. Moss is for 4060 Ti. Could be. I didn't... Uh, yeah, could be. Could be, Mike. Uh, I, I will check in the... I have a table later yeah. to, to compare the differences. Another interesting thing is if you see the, the red header, that, for example... Oh, sorry, yeah. ...is uh, specifically for the gaming model. That's the RGB header, so the yeah. Ventus model doesn't have any RGB. So if you grab the Ventus, there you see it, it's just not connected. Um, but the header is there because it shares the, the PCB design with the gaming model. On top. So that's why there's no cable sticking out of it. Yeah, indeed. So very small differences. It's a really small PCB, but if we compare it, well, then I need to take... Yeah, no use. I don't have that here. So here it's... Uh, maybe you can see the... This is the 3060. And you see the PCB starts uh, here to here. And if we put this next to it, let me see if something like that... Yeah, it's much smaller. Yeah, so it's about, uh, what is it, 10 centimeters smaller or something. Should be actually like this. That's uh, where the connectors are. Yeah. Uh, Skeets is asking, so they're all 8 pin power? Yes, that's correct. All 8 pin power. Yeah, uses uh, 115 maximum. Uh, so from the PCI Express bus, you can normally draw maximum 75 watt, but uh, most power. Later, we will also show you that is going via the uh, PCI Express uh, power connector. Um, like Mike, remember how much it was? Uh, through the cable. Yeah. Uh, under load. Seventy something, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like over seventy watts over the cable. Indeed. So. So, so it's only like forty watts left yeah. over the slot. Indeed. Um, under full load, that is. Possible. And I think regarding compatibility, this kind of connector at this moment in the market is still. Um, much especially in this price segment yeah. usually like uh, last week we actually launched our new power supply series and they are uh, quite affordable actually but still offer the, the new PCIe 5 connector so the the 12 VH PWR um, but most like that more entry level or older power supplies they still only have the 6 plus 2 pin um, and also because this is a more affordable card it's, it doesn't make sense that you have to combine it with a very expensive power supply no, this is this is one time eight pin. Yeah, not and a that, two that's times plenty eight pin. because out of one time eight pin, you can already draw one hundred and fifty watts of power, and this is a one hundred and fifteen. Can watt you switch to the mobile or to the mobile to the detailed cam mic? Yes. Yeah. So only one times eight, and uh, like what Mike is saying, you can get uh, seventy five watt via this connector max, and you can get one fifty watt via an eight pin. So no need to put anything else there. Technically, you could already run this from uh, a six pin. Yeah, indeed. But nowadays, basically, all power supplies have eight pin yeah. connectors. Uh, so pin. let's go back to the gaming. Indeed, uh, the, the DLMOS over there, that's uh, for the TI models, Mike. Uh, Torx fan 5.0, uh, so uh, a very good fan on this one. And that's also what, uh, what the big difference is between these two models. If you look at gaming and Ventus Black, uh, it's in the cooler. So this one has uh, three heat pipes, uh, copper base plate, um, um, these kind of things, and if we then look at the Ventus models, it's yeah, I, I, I want to say it's a, it's a simple design. But yeah, like this the, GPU also doesn't need any complex uh, uh, cooler design. The thing is, that's also why, we, for example, don't have any three fan models. Yeah. It only consumes 150 watt at full load. That's very limited. To put it in perspective, like the the 1060 that was known as being a very efficient card that was a 120 TDP, so even slightly higher than this. Then you had the 2060, how much was it? We just had it, I think 160 or 185, depending on uh, the memory configuration. Yeah, I can go uh, there, 160, 185. Yeah, and 185 for the 12 gig. Yeah. Then for the 3060, you also see 170 watts, so it's, it's actually quite a big step down in terms of uh, <coughs> power consumption for this card. So also you don't need a huge cooler on this. It, it only costs extra and it doesn't make too much sense. Yeah. Uh, cooler is quite expensive. Yeah, I mean, cooler uh, is expensive. a lot of high-end materials are used. Uh, it's it's cost uh, money. So if you add a fan, it means you're not only adding a fan for a three fan model, but you need to eat, add the heat sink as well. You need to yeah. enlarge the heat pipes. So, uh, you know, I, I cannot talk in absolute uh, dollars how much that would cost. 
I know on main boards, you know, some main boards, Mike, uh, am I lying if I say the high-end main boards, the, the, the cost of the cooler would be like 50? Yeah, it uh, can be very high. Yeah. Like for the, for the godlike and boards like those, it can get really expensive. Because yeah. also in the cooling, of course, you have the RGB, you have magnetic connects, so the whole cooling part can be quite expensive. You yeah. have heat pipes in there. And, uh, and it makes sense, you know, if yeah. you have two fans or three fans uh, or one fan, you know, it all adds uh, cost uh, to it. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't need three fans. That's NRT also says uh, two fans technically is overkill too. Yes, I would agree. Later on, yeah. you will also see the temperatures of this car are already very low. And the, this actually has pretty small fans. Yeah. Can you maybe grab the 3060 gaming model? Uh, this Just one. for reference. So You can already see that the, the fans are relatively small. Yeah. And I have another one. This is the, I believe, 3090 Supreme. Yeah, like 3080 Ti. Oh, yeah. 3080 Ti. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you maybe put them side by side so you have them the same distance from the camera? Uh, you mean like this? Uh, no. Yeah, li like turn around next to each other. Next, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're next to each other. No, because now the the other cards are further away. Make them the same distance. Oh, like this. Yeah, but why don't you ask me? Can you put them side by side? <laughs> That would be more clear from my perspective. But now it's, it's easier to see that the, the fans are relatively small. So yeah, Mike is sitting in a different uh, uh, location. Yeah. Not location, I mean <laughs> around the <laughs> corner. <laughs> but yeah, you already see uh, this one is uh, way smaller than this one. That's also why you see that it, it's actually not sticking out very far on top of the bracket for the 4060. Yeah, also. Yeah, and, and the weight, I mean, this one, I mean, I'm doing some gym stuff and then fitness and that kind of <laughs> stuff. So I, I'm not going to say this is heavy. He cannot do this for 10 minutes. <laughs> I, no, I'm not With the 4060, yes, but <laughs> but this is you know it's 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 it feels like a like a cheap toy. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably I should not say that uh, because I work for MSI. Uh, and it's not cheap. But like I it mean, is small and it's it's way yeah. lighter. It's way lighter. Yeah. It, the, the, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, let's talk about the differences. Uh, so first, uh, I think three weeks ago we talked about RTX 4060 Ti. So first I want to compare the gaming and the Ventus with uh, that. Uh, the, the, the biggest differences are of course in the GPU itself. So TDP, uh, the VRM. Uh, so uh, the number of phases, so the, the TI gets a 5 plus 1, this gets a 4 plus 1. Why it only needs, uh, uh, yeah, only 115 watts. Skate says, by the way, uh, still two and a half slots. No, this is actually a two slot card. Yeah, so two it, slots. Yeah, it doesn't stick out over the bracket. So, nope. it, so two slots only. Yeah. So it's relatively thin as well. Can you grab the 3060 again, the gaming? There you will see that it, it sticks out over. Two and a half. Yeah, that's a two and a half slot one. Uh, two maybe point, even more. 2.3, yeah. 2.4, I would say. Not, not more. Or maybe. No, I think this is quite a lot. Yeah, 2.6 maybe, yeah. Because this is already two yeah, slots. Yeah, I think it's a little more than two and a half. Yeah, 2.6. Let's uh, leave it to that. Um, uh, yeah, then, so the TI, Michael's right. Uh, TI is using DRMOS, uh, so probably on a different PCB. Um, this one doesn't have that, doesn't need it. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, it's only 150 watt. Everything comes back to that power design. And uh, for the gaming, we have uh, RGB on the uh, side. Um, I can show you that. So it's on top. That's what we call the side in the MSI logo. And uh, for the 60 I also had it in the front. Uh, these <laughs> Skeets is saying in YouTube chat, I want the X670 EAs, but my wife would divorce me. That means you save plenty of money to go for a high-end graphics card as well. Yeah. It's actually very good. Yeah. <laughs> I know don't, how they Don't are. tell your wife I said this, by the way. Yeah, I know <laughs> how they are, indeed. Um, and then compare the gaming with the Ventus, and you see the biggest difference, uh, not only the RGB, but especially the cooler. GPU is the same, so uh, it's, it's just the cooler. Um, yeah, and GPU today, same, unfortunately, I mean, same. normally we stream on Wednesday, so we also wanted to do it today. Uh, we cannot uh, compare them side by side, so we're only going to talk about uh, the uh, Ventus Black today. Um, shall we do some benchmarks, Mike? Yeah, sounds good. What do you want to start with? What do you prefer? What does Chad prefer? We have games, we have stress tests. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Let me you first, also have uh, some nice demonstration of converting video with the new uh, encoder. Yeah. With we, Well, we will first do some uh, game benchmarks. Sounds good. Um, Uh, Fijo Mayo is asking, new Torx fans 5, are they just the bearings? Like, you mean in the difference? No, I think the fan blades are also a bit different. I the think whole fan is uh, redesigned. Yeah, Peter yeah. did this in an earlier live stream, I think with the launch of the 40 series. He explained a bit about them. But there are more differences than just the bearing. And Mike, <laughs> I hope this works. <laughs> Still works. Am I going to... Can you see this? Or is it too... Yeah, this is easy, easily readable. So now it consumes 75 watts. Now it's booting, right? I don't know. I, I, yes, yes, it's booting. <laughs> I pushed the button. Ah, okay. Let's see if we already... Nah, almost, almost, almost. Ah, there we go. It says C790, but there's actually a B760 motherboard. Yeah, so that's the login. <laughs> Older installation. Uh, you have the specs? Yes, I do. Here so, they are um, the bottom yeah. of the screen. Uh, Mike insisted that we would lower down the specs of our test bench because normally we have uh, the, the fastest GPU, CPU, and everything in there. Like, it doesn't make sense to, to run like a very high end no. CPU with a 4060. Of course, you can, and if you only do. If you do mostly productivity work and only game a little bit on the side, then it may also make sense, actually. Um, but we decided to go for a more balanced system. So we're running um, an Intel Core i5-13400 uh, today. So that's a nice, relatively affordable, but still quite powerful CPU. It's actually a 10 core. It has 10 native cores. Um, <coughs> and uh, we're running 32 gigabytes of DDR5-6000 memory. Yeah, so um, uh, B760. Hey, the, oh, the, the specs visual still says C790, but it's a B760 uh, Tomahawk motherboard. So, this is the system in idle. Choose about uh, 10 watts. Mike, can you also visualize this one? Uh, oh, sorry, the CPU. Uh, there was a CPU. Yeah, can you maybe make it a little bit bigger? Is that possible? It's a bit, a bit hard to read, I think. Which one? Like the, the all the graphs. Everything. Yeah. Um, Maybe I the scaling, uh, like 200%. Uh, scaling. Yeah, L1K is asking uh, why a high PSU Shall I go basically to a low because. Resolution? Uh, sorry, one moment. Uh, Edwin, that, that's basically because the, the uh, power supply was already in this system as we used it uh, last week. But you could run this with a way lower rated power supply, but you will see that later in the, in the power drawings. Uh, sorry, Eric, what did you say? No, I fixed it. I, okay. I went to 175. I wanted to go to a lower resolution. This should be fine, right? Yeah, it is already better. So yeah. now you see the uh, package power Can of the CPU is like this one as well? 9 watts, 6 watts. Um, I think we have like the most important ones. The, Mike, the, the, the total yeah. uh, power wall. Oh, there we go. Can you maybe cut this and paste it in the other slide? I think I already have. No, well. I have to adjust it a little bit, but I can do that. There we go. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> okay. What is it saying? 70, 70 watts idle. Not doing anything. Yeah. So um, let's first do firm mark. Like if you do totally nothing on a system, it will even go a bit lower, like 55 to 60 watts. If you ask me, it's still high, not? Mm, no, for a full system, it's a DIY system. It's not that much. I see the GPU now doing 52 watt. No, that's that's the bug. Um, oh, that's the bug. So I need to yeah. read this one. So I'm going to put it on 20 amps. And then Mike? Put it on DC. Uh, okay, this is probably where I will blow up things. It's, by default it's on alternating current, but this side is DC. DC, okay. And then you see a value? 0 0.55. Yeah. And uh, okay, so that's... And it's 12 volts, so if you multiply it, you have how much watts it 0 draws 0.55 times 12. Yeah. Okay, that's, I mean, it's at 7 idle watt. Yeah, so that's, uh, 
That yeah. sounds about correct. Okay. And now if you put it under load, then you uh, will well, see the Well, let load. me first, uh, I mean, so CPU is, is about uh, 15 if I don't move, move the mouse. Yeah. Even lower. Yeah, it's, it's fair. Like, Intel CPUs in idle are, are they have very low package. Yeah, performance. but why <laughs> is then here saying 68? Oh, that's because, because of this bug. This is the full system. And this is not only the full system, but you always have a little bit of efficiency loss because your memory yeah, okay, is Yeah, but that's also because side. of this, uh, this bug. Because it's using, no. No, 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 that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. But you're okay. always, you're, you're measuring on the wall and you have a little bit of efficiency loss, so the actual yeah. power consumption is a bit lower of the system on the DC side than okay. what you measure. So now we're only going to stress uh, the GPU. Oh, oh, oh. Did you put it in the fan? Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Should work like this. Okay, so. So now the GPU is under full load, like 100% load. Yeah, so yeah, actually we see here 115 yeah. I just saw. Uh, this power meter on, how do you call this uh, Voltkraft thingy? It's like, um, oh, what's the English word for this? True RMS, it says. It's like an ampere meter, basically. Okay, amp meter. Yeah, okay, amp -meter the amp meter says, let's say, you know, it's, it's, it's running, it's changing like crazy. 7.30. Okay, so then you multiply that by 12 volts. Uh, I, I, that's why I invited you. <laughs> Uh, 7.30 times 12. So now it draws almost 88 watts of power through that cable. Of course, it will also draw a little bit through the slot um, because the, the total power consumption, you can actually see it in the overlay. Can you remove the calculator a little bit to the side? Then you can see the power consumption of the, of the total card. Uh, that one is currently at 112 watts, 14, 13, that one. Yeah. This one. So you can see that the majority of power is drawn through the, <coughs> um, the PCI Express yeah. power cable. So that's about uh, 15, 25 uh, via the PCI Express connector. Yeah, approximately. The, the, yeah. Yeah. the old of the new. Okay. So there you can also see that um, it is bugged when you switch off Furmark. So it will go to idle, but it still reports over 50 watts. But that's definitely incorrect. That's a bug. Um, I'm not going to do that. Because it's not even close to If you just switch off Furmark, then you will see the GPU power, the idle power, which is actually like around 10 watts probably. Seven. Continuous of 50 watts. Yeah, so that, that value and here is here it incorrect. drops to 0, 57, 58. Did I already do that? Yeah, so it's... Through the cable, it's only drawing like seven watts, yeah. and uh, what it draws through the slot will be even lower. So it it will be like around ten watts, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Um. Boom, 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 boom. Anything else? Uh, Mikey says that lower power draw has to uh, because of the lower clock speed. Not only that, it's also the the rest of the GPU. So now uh, we add Prime ninety five, which is uh, putting the stress on the. CPU. Uh, CPU. Yeah. I hear the fan spinning up. And I think right now you're using the default values in the BIOS, right? Yeah. So right now also the uh, CPU, um, the power limits are broader than from, like the default from Intel are relatively limited, but because we're using a relatively powerful uh, 240 millimeter only one liquid cooler, you see it right here. It's a Core Liquid 240R. Um, you, um, can actually get a higher wow. power limit. So you also when it's now under full load, how much is the power draw now of the CPU? The power draw is um, 7.30 again. Yeah, it, it's... No, the CPU. Oh, the, the CPU. Over here, 125. Like one, 125, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's 124.125. Yeah. Point. So you, you can limit this further if you want, but now if you, if you actually run your CPU with um, increased power limits, on this motherboard, of course, the VRM of your motherboard has to be able to, to um, deal the with it. The cooling, the, yeah. Yeah. Um, but now you see that the full system on a full load, so both the CPU and the GPU, um, the, the total load is, is like 315 watts. And that's like the total maximum of, of the whole system combined. So you definitely don't need an extremely high-end uh, power supply for this. You can easily run this off a 450-watt power supply. You still have plenty of headroom. Yeah. Um, so no need for. Do you remember what, what the total like power draw was last week? With the, we were testing at 850 watts, and we were drawing 900, right? 
Um, yeah, actually, I, I at a certain point now I pushed it. It was a 750 watt power supply. Oh, 750, and then yeah, but on the wall side I pushed it a bit over 850 yeah. or 800 watt. But yeah. you always have the, the difference. Of course, we have a different platform, but uh, yeah. for 1080p gaming. And that and was then with a Case Q CPU. That was a 13600K together with an RTX 4090. Yeah, but I think this for for like 320 watt, you get a lot of FPS back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like in terms of efficiency, this is actually a very good combination. Also, because the 13400 is also a very efficient CPU, yeah. um, and this GPU also very efficient, of course. Um, but this, of course, is worst case scenario because it's yeah. like a power virus. Yeah, basically, you're fully stress testing both the CPU and the GPU. Yeah. Like in in real life, you will not really see this situation, no. especially not when gaming, ah, because you will not have full load on your CPU there usually. So, stop, stop. Um, NRT says it's gaming laptop territory, power draw-wise. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. And you can actually make it a bit more efficient, like if you power limit the CPU a bit more, and for gaming that wouldn't make that much of a difference, um, then you could get the power draw even well on the 300 Mike, watts. Mike, we need to do a giveaway. I think that's a good idea. Can you remind people how they can participate? Yes, of course. Uh, if you... Go to mzi.com slash two slash insider. Or if you're watching on Twitch and YouTube, you can click on the Gleam link, which are a bot spams in the chat. And then you can still participate. We're still doing several uh, draws. You can win a, um, a wallet code for uh, Steam. Voucher, wallet code. Oh. Are you What's looking this? for the wallet code? Sorry? Are no, you no. looking? <laughs> there was some cable. <laughs> and I, I'm always like, watching out if there's yeah. a cable on my feet. If I, you know, I don't want to. Like like uh, this morning, I was looking for a, a cable for an HDMI cable for a capture, and I, I was like having I found one and I was pulling it and then uh, several and things everything moved. collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. So we have our first winner, Eric. The honor is all yours. Equa, congratulations, Equa! Equa. You yeah. won the first Steam or wallet with a loyalty today. bonus. Thank you. Yes. So make sure if you're a returning visitor, visitor also to claim that loyalty bonus yeah. when you sign up for the game. Okay, um, let's dive a bit. I'm going to close my notebook. We don't need it now. Uh, let's dive in uh, F123. So this is the uh, 23 version. So you cannot compare this with uh, the previous one. Yeah, it's a bit heavier. Oh, let me uh, make this a little bit smaller so we can see the FPS. Oh, oh just place small. it. Place it on the left. Ah, no, okay. place, place, place it. it on the bottom left. <laughs> on top of my head, like there. Yeah. <laughs> like it. Wait. You mean like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I make it black. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think this works, right? Yeah, that's okay. There we go. Uh, let me first go to display settings. I was video drawing like mode. 120 watts. Okay, so we're running uh, 4060, 8 gig, uh, 1080p. Um, let me see what I can change here. What are we going to do, Mike? First, without DLSS? Um, yeah. I think without. Let's run it native first. That's a good idea. Yeah, and then. Ray tracing on or off? Ultra high. With ray tracing also everywhere on, okay. Ray tracing, already on or off? Um, let's do on first. So first let's make it harder and then let's see what kind of increase we can get. Okay, 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 okay. Um, By using some of those technologies. I think this looks good. Ultra high, that on, yeah. Chit says, Mike, your last name is the same name as the village where I live. Then you live right next to Horen, if I'm correct. <laughs> Uh, Sandeep is asking, what's the price? Um, uh, this is, the price is uh, 299 US dollar, yeah. the MSRP, or uh, 329 euro. Including and that's VAT. Including yep. VAT. I don't know how much, but probably like 20, 21%. That's what we do in Europe. Again, unrealistic, De Vries driving before Hamilton and Russell. <laughs> Well, this is already better than last week, right, Mike? That's true. 
Uh, so now it's like drawing 230 watts at max. A bit hovering between like 210 to 30. Okay, I calculate this. Uh, CPU 7.14. Uh, 7.14. 7 the, the, on the cable, the GPU yeah. cable. Uh, you need a calculator for that? Yes, I need. Come on, Mike. There's no calculator on this computer? Wait, what? No, maybe you can use Google <laughs> Calc. This one, right? That's My interesting. <laughs> Mike's the calculator panic. app is missing on this system. Ah, I also have a phone. Mm. How much did you say? Well, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm going to say what's now, right now. Uh, <laughs> 7.20. Time so that's like that's like 86 watts again over there. Yeah, but makes sense because basically like the GPU is now under full load. You also see it in the overlay, so it's drawing between like um, usually 110 to 150 watts, um, and basically that's that's the maximum that it can draw. So this is 1080p, and we are running 70 to 80 FPS, and that was with ray tracing. This is with ray tracing. Hmm. Yes, I'm actually surprised. Yeah. Here's SYN 92H says this is barely enough for 1080p. Like this is really pushing it in terms of 1080p because everything is ultra and we put yeah, all the ray tracing yeah. on and there is no DLSS enabled. So this is basically the, hard we, the hardest we can make it on 1080p. Uh, later on we'll fiddle a bit around. Without any DLSS yeah. or uh, frame generation tricks. Indeed. And it still runs fine. F123 does n still not have frame, frame generation, so it's only yeah. DLSS 2.0. Uh, should we write this down? I'm uh, opening my laptop or oh, notebook. It's a. Uh, it's so a it notebook. has 75 FPS average. Ah, la 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 la. Well, uh, welcome, Foxcore. Am I going to make a, Am I going to make a slide of this or just? Uh, and our T says 33% isn't CPU bound. No, and on these kind of settings, it's definitely GPU bound. With all the ray okay, tracing. So this is F1, F1 2020. No, it's not 2023, it's just 2023. It's 23. This is uh, 1080p, this is uh, RTX on. That's it, right? Hirsten says it's a 1080p card at the end. Yeah, it depends a bit on what you play. If you play like esports titles, 1440p is no issue at all. Um, in many titles, when you enable DLSS and frame generation, it can also run most games fine on, on 1440p. Do you want to run uh, stuff natively, then in certain AAA titles, the more poorly optimized ones, um, then it can struggle in 1440p, for sure. So Mike, you also want um, like this. Robert says, this car guys, this card blows. I think it very much depends on what you're looking for. If you're Depends Looking how rich you are. Also that. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are definitely faster graphics cards than this. Of course, they're also more expensive. But you also have options that are um, relatively close to this price, but offer better rasterization performance. So like the pure performance well, the without any ray tracing, uh, stuff like that. For example, AMD is pretty good at those kind of things. Um, but like the, you are missing stuff in the complete package then. Because this, for example, is by far the cheapest card now with that new um, NVIDIA encoder that has the AV1 support. That's something you would, for example, not get on an AMD 6000 series. So it, it depends a bit on what you want. Like if it's only about pure rasterization performance for you, then there are definitely better options out there. Yeah. Um, do you want an extremely efficient card and get the latest I think AMD has a lot of uh, interesting rasterization cards in this price segment. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, it all depends. This is definitely not the perfect card for everyone. We will surely not uh, claim it is. Uh, but for some people, this like for small form factor builds with this kind of TDP, is is awesome. Also, the tiny size, of course, helps with this. It's beeping. Um, Divina says uh, hardware AV1 encode and decode are killer features for future proofing. Um, yeah, of course, it, it depends on if you make use of those features, but I think they're ver definitely very nice features to have, especially if you do some kind of content creation, um, recording, also playback of, of uh, certain content. 
then those are indeed very nice features. Later on, we'll play a bit, uh, yeah, around a bit with Yeah, decoding is not so much an issue. I mean, uh, each decent CPU from the last few generations can easy uh, transcode uh, AV1. I mean, uh, you don't have to have a fast CPU for that. Uh, but of course, you're transcoding, so you're not really seeing uh, the, the, the decoded AV1 stream. Yeah. Um, and now, it, you know, I think... The decoding uh, also makes it a lot more efficient, having that. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. In terms of power consumption, yes. And yeah, the encoding is very nice if you want to do a certain kind of content creation. So, for example, in-game recordings yeah. you can do very nicely with them. Um, if you want to convert files uh, using AV1, uh, if you want to live stream on platforms, of course, this is still quite early, so it's still in beta on many platforms, or platforms don't support it yet. Um, but this is definitely this is something you will see more and more in the in the coming years, that AV1 will, will get a lot bigger there. And AV1 is, is very efficient as well. Because MasterDoc says uh, it blows for the price, only interesting for small form factors. Uh, otherwise, you're better off with a 6700 XT or something. Also depends what you do. Like in, in pure rasterization performance, yes, definitely. The 7600 XT is faster in pure rasterization performance. Yeah. Um, if you want that encoder, the encoder of a 6700 XT uh, is, is not even close to, to the one in this car. So if you're doing a lot of content creation um, and you are planning on using the encoder, then this could be a very nice option. Okay, so uh, we did another benchmark. Uh, this one has, um, um, Mike, can you show it to my, uh, yes. switch to my uh, Here we go. professional made uh, Excel sheet? <laughs> Mr. Mestro says, Mike, will you be upgrading to the 4060 because of low power draw? Actually, right now I'm running a 3060, so 4060 will be, uh, it will be a, a bit of an upgrade in terms of performance, but also in power draw, so we'll make the system a little bit more silent usually. So it would be a nice one, maybe I steal it away after this live stream. GigaRam says, yeah, all the NVIDIA cards are loads better for streaming. Yeah, in terms of streaming, the, the NVIDIA cards are definitely very good in terms of their encoders. Okay, Mike, can you go back? Um, I'm running another benchmark, uh, so which is the last preset, oh, I mean, we can do more. Uh, 1080p, uh, no ray tracing, DLSS on. Um, I can add another one in here. Um, frame generation is off, off, off. Well, so this game still does not support for frame generation or DLSS 3.0. Uh, like we uh, mentioned last week, this is still uh, DLSS 2.0, and yeah, we're waiting for adding, a patch. They're adding the frame generation later on. The yeah. setting is already there, but it's, it's still greater. Yeah, it's quite confusing because setting is already there and says like uh, you need to do like this and this, but it says you need to have a 40 series card and disable HDR, yeah. and we have a 40 series card and we disabled HDR, but it still doesn't work. So I think yeah. it's something that will and be we're added too later lazy on. to read the small notes. That's us. <laughs> I mean, then wait for Peter. He's the one. Uh, who talks like three hours and knows but all yeah, the Even without the frame generation, you already see very high frame rates for yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any requests? Uh, Mike, can you switch back to the, yes. to the yeah, Excel sheet? Oh, yeah. So any requests of benchmarks or variations you want us to show? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I keep adding uh, things over here. Um, this is... Uh, Pearson says set. try Hogwarts Legacy on this card. We actually were trying, but it doesn't work stably with our current driver. We're using an early driver. We were actually testing a little bit with this before. Oh, we can. We can show you the crashes. Yeah. It has some issues with uh, the current driver. Or me. It has issues with me. Okay, maybe go back to the benchmark. I think it's almost yes. finished. You see, it's. 185. Um, let me see the chat. Oh, um, Giram, he's, he's uh, going to benchmark at home as well. He's going to benchmark on the 2080 Ti yeah, gaming you have, Z3. You have to send Giram the game first then. <laughs> no, yes, if you want. Uh, Fijo says also try. Oh, benchmark. send me the game, yes. Yeah. For Cyberpunk 2077, we also have Cyberpunk installed, yeah. so that's something um, we can... Uh, yeah, so the game, 185, 
You see? And please remember this is all on ultra settings. So we can even, I mean, in most games there are a few settings you can lower down and then, uh, which are uh, mostly um, like clouds and this kind of stuff, light, uh, which will uh, uh, make a big impact. If you want, we can switch to uh, 4040p as well. But you see, yeah, 185 FPS. That's, I think it's, uh, if you are not interested in ray tracing, I think it's interesting. And later this, Mike, We'll add... With frame generation on? Yeah, 50% frames? Yeah, approximately. I would say. In most titles, so I would say you're, yeah, around 90 higher. Chat. You can see the, show the crashes, yeah? We will do that, don't worry. Warzone 2, we will get killed over there. <laughs> I only play DMZ. Okay, I'm going to check if I can uh, uh, run I would say like 275 FPS if you have frame generation there, approximately. On 1080p, that is. Uh, Mike, can you go to the... Yes. There we go. Apple. What's the resolution this, for this monitor? It's 1440p. I don't know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but the ultra wide, not, okay. No, it's just... Um, this is the correct resolution. Okay, but then I'm going to confirm changes. I'm going to switch on um, accept. I'm going to switch on. Uh, I think just set it to the highest setting. I think it automatically does it then. Then you have everything the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is. Uh, let and me see DLSS the is off? On. You want off? Yeah, let's do the same three as we just okay, did. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, DLSS. I always, in the I always forget where this option is. No, it's is. in the other menu. Ah, yeah, the, 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 the video menu. Yes. My god. Yeah. Um, so, F1 says, is Diablo 4 available for benchmarks? No. Nope. Uh, that one isn't installed, I think. Well. We, Is it? We have it. No, uh, I can try. I mean, yeah. we played it on not. Oh, I don't know on this. And I think uh, that's a different. Preset uh, ultra. So ray tracing is on with this one, right? Yes. Now, uh, this is 1440p ultra settings. Ray tracing on. DLSS off. Can you enlarge the overlay a little bit? Because you switched resolution, of course. Okay. Tell me how. Uh, control shift. Uh, I think like three or four, <laughs> or two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm doing that on my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that won't work. <laughs> yes, there we go. And that, can you make it bigger? Oh, no, that's the other side. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Let me make this a little bit smaller. I can put it in. Is the it too big? There we go. So we can see. The wattage as well. So it now draws around 200 watts of power. Yeah, it's a pity we didn't look at the power usage. Uh, it's been in the screen the whole time. Everyone yeah, was I mean, I didn't list it. Ah, okay. Also very difficult to determine what the average power usage But like uses. basically, you're, especially with these kind of settings, with everything maxed out, you're, you're also maxing out uh, what the GPU can do. So you're basically drawing 110 to 115 watts yeah. on average. And then the power draw of the CPU during uh, gaming is pretty low. So now it's only like 24 watts, 25 watts. It's a yeah. total package power. And that's why uh, the scenario we showed you over 300 watts, that's a full load with a power virus. Yeah. That's something it's you will not see in gaming nope. over 300 watts with this configuration. And that makes this configuration very suitable to build in a very small form factor as well. So this is an ATX board, but you can also easily run this in a very tiny mini ITX case. Okay. 20, 30 to... 45 average. 45. Um. Do the same with DLSS on? Yes.
I hate this this menu, how it um, works. PC Central says, how much does the 4060 cost? Um, the model that we're testing here right now is uh, the MSRP model. That's 299 US dollar or 329 euros, including US dollar excluding VAT euros, including 20% uh, VAT. Hmm. I would say... Seventy-five, seventy-three, seventy, maybe. That's now at sixty-six FPS. Yeah, around seventy. That's if I look at the other numbers. So again, forty-forty uh, P ultra settings, RTX on, ray tracing, uh, DLSS on. No frame generation because that's not supported yet in our version. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, why don't you Google like uh, when? Where is my uh, dealer's S3 patch? When is it coming? Uh, one twenty-three. Yeah, that one. Any date? So uh, basically, Mike googled and everybody's complaining about it. Wait for a patch. Yeah, the NVIDIA driver is not ready for DLSS 3 yet for this game. Okay. Apparently. So it should be uh, included with an update. But later on we will test uh, a bit of Cyberpunk as well, and that one already yeah. has frame generation. So you can get a bit of an idea of what it does. And of course it will be similar in F123 once it arrives. So, probably low 70s, the FPS? Yeah, no, it's quite, I would say like halfway 70s on average. <coughs> because you saw 80 one time. <laughs> yeah, and I also saw 70, or even in the 60s. 60. No, not 60, but okay. Uh, James Campbell says, buy a 360 and you get more physical hardware in terms of rendering units and it will cost the same money, you have more RAM. On average, the 360 is, is quite a bit slower than, um, than the 4060. It is a clear difference. 73. Um, you do indeed get more VRAM, that's a thing. But also, on the other hand, you're missing out on, for example, the new uh, NVENC. So you don't have the, the native AV1 support there on that card. So it's, it's a bit of a trade-off. Of course, you, you can go for a previous gen card. Um, Probably in, in terms of price performance, that, that can be a very nice choice, but you, you're missing on some of the new features. Also, the difference is that the 3060 does not support DLSS 3, so it does not have the frame generation. So in certain games that support frame generation, you could get quite a bit of a, a frame rate difference uh, whether you're using a 4060 or a 3060. Stupid menu. But in, in the end, it all depends on what you want and what you value most. Okay. Uh, our last benchmark, or should we do 4K? Nah. Um, let me see, this was, we still need to have ray tracing off and DLSS on. Yeah, working on it. That's what I'm running right now. Nice. I'm guessing it's um, 170. How much? 170. 170? No. Oh, no, no, no sorry, much. sorry, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong numbers. 130, I think. No. Let's see. I'm still calculating, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a loop like shit. How much, how much would this be? Um, I would say... One oh five? Oh shit! No, the the numbers are much higher. higher. Okay, I'm I'm confused now. <laughs> yeah. So forty forty p DLSS on ray tracing off. Yeah. So basically, because my calculations are uh, not correct, 
that means that I also draw the conclusion that ray tracing on 4040p is much more heavier than on 1080p. Yeah. James Campbell says the problem with frame generation is lag. It gives a 144 hertz monitor the same lag as an old 60 hertz TN panel. Actually, TM panels are fast, so that's not the best example, maybe. Uh, also, the refresh rate is quite a bit different than um, the kind of lag you would get from frame generation. It, in, it Definitely, frame generation introduces a little bit of uh, uh, delay, for sure. But if you enable NVIDIA Reflex, you basically already wipe that away again. Of course, you can go even faster with the combination of um, NVIDIA Reflex without frame generation. Um, but then, of course, your FPS will be a little bit lower. Do you want to have best of both worlds? Then usually I would say go for a higher end card. You don't need frame generation, and you still get the, the fastest response times. K-Mac okay, wins. But like comparing um, no NVIDIA Reflex and no frame generation Damn. to frame generation with NVIDIA Reflex, that's actually very close to each other. <laughs> so, Mike? 140 FPS even. I said 130. <laughs> I was too yeah. low. Okay, go to the Excel sheet. Yes. I'm, uh, I, will, I will boot up, uh, I will try to escape this game and boot up uh, Cyberpunk. Yeah, so uh, interesting numbers. Um, you know, and, and this is with most games. Um, it depends on your settings. Uh, I personally, uh, I like to play everything on Ultra because I like uh, fancy graphics. I, I like ray tracing. I don't care. I only care about frame rate. And <laughs> I need, switch everything off. Yeah, and Mike uh, switches everything off. He uh, just yeah. uh, if he sees a pixel of the enemy, it's good enough, yeah. so he can shoot it. <laughs> and he, he knows how to aim at a pixel. I need a bigger block, <laughs> a bunch <laughs> of pixels to aim, uh, to spray. Um, yeah, so it really depends on your settings. Uh, I mean, uh, if you uh, are willing to skip RTX on, so ray tracing, and you are willing to sacrifice on the ultra settings to medium. And the difference between, in most games, the difference between medium and, and ultra are not that big. In it's terms of what you see or? In terms of what, what you see, yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes it's just a, you know, a, a few big, um, uh, how do you say that? Few big hungry options. If you disable them, you still have fancy graphics uh, across the board. But maybe you know the clouds are less, or the I don't know uh, other details are less important. Usually, up until high, you. It, but this this differs per game. But in yeah, most yeah. games, I would say up until high, you can see a, quite a bit of a difference still. With ultra, you do get quite a bit of an FPS hit, and usually you don't see that much of a yeah. difference. Maybe a little bit, but it's it's at a certain point also in terms of uh, these settings, it, you get diminishing returns. And so, then. If you look at this, uh, no, let, let's look at. Uh, um, hmm. We didn't. We didn't do without the LSS on. Cheers, everyone. But that will be around 70, right? 40 for 40p. 40 40p without the LSS. Yeah, we also didn't run that on the 1080. Yeah. No, yeah, I think that will be around that. So yeah, um, I mean 1080p, 40 40p, depending on the game. Oh, I'm going to uh, start Cyberpunk. Sorry. Did you already do a second giveaway, Mike? No, let's a do third it. one? While you boot uh, Cyberpunk. No, I'm not sure if it's booting. Maybe ask the computer kindly. So, our next now giveaway. If you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash 2 slash insider. If you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, you can also follow the direct link there are bot. Uh, puts in the chat once every five minutes. If you have already participated, no need to do anything again. You will be automatically included in the next uh, drawings as well. And we have our next winner. And the nickname is S. S, congratulations, only letter S. You also won uh, a Steam wallet code, so congrats. Um, to all winners, please keep an eye on your mailbox and we'll email the code to you in the coming days uh, with some instructions on how to redeem it. Congratulations. Let's see if uh, Eric already destroyed everything. Yeah. He's like bashing buttons. Let's see what, what's going Yeah, about. Cyberpunk. It, you, were, you were just <laughs> trying to skip all these scenes. <laughs> yeah, indeed. That's it. It's always like a hold space or whatever key or escape like this. Where <laughs> is it? Oh, press space. Um, 
gaan DLSS aan frame gen. Oké. Okay. Hmm, that's the next one. Come on, is it that difficult, Excel? So I think we're back to 1080p, right? Because the yeah. overlay well, is Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm, I still need to check the settings, but that's my uh, plan indeed. Then uh, you should make the overlay a little bit smaller. <laughs> uh, settings. Um, let me see. Eric, can you make the overlay a bit smaller? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. With the shortcut. Control shift. Yes. Yeah, like this. I would do it one smaller. Now you're blocking the CPU problem. Oh, you're demanding. Yes, I am. That's better. Now we can see everything. Okay. Um, 1080p. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hi. Just use one of the presets that will. Uh, oh, the ray tracing overdrive is uh, intense. I think they added that later, right? Uh, yeah. Huh. So an even more demanding ray tracing. DLSFs off. Yeah, let's first run it native. So let's make it very demanding. <laughs> the problem is, what is native nowadays? Like DLSS, basically you're internally rendering a lower resolution, and now we're rendering the native resolution. Um, checking ray tracing. So ray tracing is on. Okay. So ultra settings, ray tracing on. No path ray tracing. That's the overdrive. It says custom, but that's only the. That's because I switched off frame generation. Ah, okay. And, and that's uh, what I'm telling you. You know what is nowadays default because <laughs> it's getting confusing. Uh, yeah. So the problem with this game is it doesn't have a benchmark. We're just going to. But drive you do around. have the other DLSS on, right? Apart from the frame generation. Yeah. 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 Okay. So basically, uh, did I DLSS on? It says auto, so I think it will do something. Uh oh. Well, oh, the, the benefit of this game, you can, once I'm in, uh, you can uh, switch, it's quite easy. Um, settings, no, the frame generation, ah, this auto, yes, okay, off. Yes, there we go. Apply, need to reboot, no. <laughs> Luckily, it's not like that. Okay, uh, yeah, um, 29, 30. Yeah, so you see the tearing. Mr. Bastardox is asking, is there any headroom for overclocking? Seems interesting to try. We didn't try, but mm. I would say it's quite limited. You know, uh, nowadays with the RTX 40 architecture and, and already with RTX 30, NVIDIA, I don't know how they call it, Turbo Boost or Boost Overdrive, you know, uh, fancy marketing. They name. basically dynamically overclock already. Yeah. And this is also what Intel is doing, you know. Yeah. They are using the maximum of your silicon. So some CPUs you can get better uh, performance than others, uh, but manually overclocking is dead. It meaning, yes, you can get some extra performance, but normally the, the power hit, the what it's what you're extra using, you know, it's like a curvature. Uh, hey, did he kill me? I think so. What? I need to, Mike, can you talk? Because then I can... Yeah. Uh, I would also say in general, like under vaulting is the, the more the, interesting the new thing to do nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> because um, especially on some parts, under vaulting and under clocking can make your system a whole lot more efficient. Let's see what he wants. Um, without losing that much more performance. Pointing a gun at me. Really expecting to pay Skeet twice. Skeet says my 7900 Buy XT uh, overclocks pretty good. Mm. Yeah, of course, you can still get a bit more out of them with overclocking, but like compared to like a decade ago, you had so much headroom uh, in terms of overclocking. That basically has disappeared. Um, Always have to ask. Especially with like CPUs. A bit longer ago, you had like the Core 2 Duos, and they were like 1.8 gigahertz default, and some you could oh, run like oh, that's right, that's right. three and a half gigahertz, so almost twice the clock speed 24-7. So those kind of performance increases um, you cannot get any more out of today's hardware. Because basically, the um, uh, the, the, the vendors like uh, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, they are already optimizing their chips a bit more. So they already get more performance out of them um, by themselves. Am I missing or what? Probably. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, let's... Um, I even don't remember how to switch weapons. Skate says, yep, the 8320 from 3.4 to 4.7 gigahertz. Yeah, like those those generations, they would overclock like crazy. And you really got a huge performance what? increase out of it. Nowadays, it's just minor, I would say, compared to, to those years, at least. Skate says, I never enjoyed my PC as much as I do now. Yeah, like on the one hand, it's it's nice that you already get like basically the maximum performance from your components out of the box. But on the other hand, I did like to fiddle around with it and see what else I could get out of it. And that, of course, is a lot more limited now. But oh. for the like the the for most users that would use hardware um, out of the box as it's designed by the manufacturer, I think now these are better what times because it's it's a lot have? easier just to get maximum performance. I want to go outside, Mike. To push the button. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh. Phew. So right now, on the, the ultra settings with the ray tracing, I would say this is a bit too much for this card, right? Yeah. But I want to go. I see like 35 FPS. I don't think that's a great experience. Oh. Just like a, a, are you friendly? Probably. Anyway, uh, let me switch. Uh, uh, so 35, that's... Uh, yeah. 35, okay, dealers are on. Settings, uh, auto. Frame generation off. Auto, quality? No, I would just go for quality. Quality. Apply. So already quite a big increase. So we're already over 60 now, 62 approximately. So do you feel a big difference? Compared to the previous setting? I'm trying to kill those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's smoother. For sure. Oh. And this is just the DLSS, right? No frame generation yet. No. Now, come on. Your aim didn't get much better. No. <laughs> It's a long time ago I played this game. I finished the game. Is that time for frame generation? Yeah. So now we're at approximately 60 FPS. Okay, let me add in. Approximately 60, is that 59? No, it, it's like hovering a bit from 59 to 62, 63. 60. So around 60 is... Uh, Okay. Um, Depends on the direction you're looking in, in the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so quality benchmarking here today. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. <laughs> Depends on the direction you were looking into. Okay, so this with frame generation. But I think you didn't fix uh, the DLSS setting to quality. Uh, settings. Yeah, let's fix it again to quality. Apply. So we're at least somewhat comparing apples to apples. So now it's bumping up to around 90. So we went from like 35 to 60, now a little bit over 90 FPS. This is all inside, so outside it could be a different story. I'm picking up everything. Oh, detonator. Uh, yeah, go. Boom, I guess. Somewhere. Right, me? Hmm. Um, James Campbell says, AMD benefits way more from Undervolt. Yeah, in general, I think AMD indeed 
benefits a bit more. Also for, for a CPU side, like the AM5 CPUs, if you do a little bit of fine tuning and undervolting, you can get them to be very, very efficient. Where's my gun? So do you feel a big difference again with the previous setting? Um, hmm. Not as much of a difference as the... There are more enemies, right? that's what I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Is that because of DLSS or uh, because of frame generation? It uh, doubles the more enemies? More frames, more enemies, right? Oh, you see? I'm going to try 4040p. Um, so how much was this, Mike? You said 90 something? Yeah, like uh, low 90s, 92 maybe on average. 92, okay. You can switch to my, um, to my Excel sheet. Um, Gigaram says, yeah, I undervolted my uh, 5900X. Yeah, I think those CPUs also with um, a curve optimizer, you can get them to be Settings, quite a bit more efficient videos. and still get a bit more performance out of them. It's a nice combination. To have. This one, Mike? Uh, 2560, 600? Or 4040? Um, let's do, um, yeah, this is fine. 4040p is a good resolution to test on. Already. Um, we're going to work backwards, so everybody can guess. So this frame generation. So these were all with ray tracing on, because if we switch it off, then uh, we have to reboot the game as well. Is that? Yeah, I think in Cyberpunk it is. Okay. Or is that only Hogwarts Legacy? I think... Can you do it on the fly in Cyberpunk? I'm not sure. You're the cyberpunk guy, Eric. You should no, know. No, this is like <laughs> when, it, when it was released. I played it with all the bugs. Silent Shadow says uh, 4060 is slower than 3060 Ti. Yes, that is correct. In most situations, the 3060 Ti is a little bit faster. Why don't I have a big ass gun? But the 4060 is a lot more efficient and has the newer NVENC. So it's a bit, depends on what you want. But uh, like pure performance, X. 3060 Ti definitely slightly faster. No, no good, no good, no good. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, um, Silent Shadow is asking, is that screen tearing? That's definitely possible, as our capture card does not support things like uh, G-Sync, for example. So you can definitely see, see some tearing there. Uh, Schnips86 says, and slower than uh, 3060 and 1440p in a lot of games. I wouldn't say a lot of games. In most games, in 1440p, 4060 is definitely faster than the 3060. I think you need like very specific examples to make the 3060 faster than the 4060. I'm, I'm missing most. So basically, you have to search for making it extremely VRM hungry. Um, and usually those are scenarios that you wouldn't really run on a mid-range card anyway, I would say. Okay, Mike, FPS? Or should oh, I, play again? I was reading the chat, you have to do, uh, do it <laughs> Damn again. it, <laughs> I keep dying. I don't know how, to s uh, anybody in the chat, how do I select a big-ass weapon? You know. It's, it's the B on the keyboard for big-ass weapon. No. That didn't work. <laughs> no, weapon. Now you have no weapon. Alt. You have a weapon wheel, but I forgot, like, maybe the function keys? No. So let's see, we have, we're now running 1440p. This is not with everything maxed out, right? Uh, going to check. Settings. Uh, oh, this is with the LSS, yeah. 4040p. Yeah, with the LSS. Yeah, oh yeah, sorry, this is with uh, an, an even frame and generation. And the frame generation, yeah, because the, your frame rates were so high, I was uh, a bit surprised. You were confused, yeah. Yeah, I thought you were running it with everything off, so no. I expected like 20 FPS or something. No. So what are we going to write down? Um, Heglot is asking, how is the price compared to the 3060 Ti? Depends a bit on the region. Um, I would say 3060 Ti is, at least in Europe, a bit more expensive still. Um, but uh, the MSRP of the um, 4060 is 2.99 US dollar, excluding VAT, or 3.29 euros, including VAT. 
So compare that to the prices of the 3060 Ti in your region, and you know which one is the cheaper one for you. Silent Shadow says, um, best value card at the moment is the 6700 XT. In terms of pure performance, I think that's definitely one of them. 6650 XT for the price is also still a pretty good one. Um, but yeah, that's more like a pure performance card, like the overall package. It is a bit less efficient. You don't have the AV1, those kind of things. So yeah, depends on what you want again. But like in, in terms of pure stuff. performance, look at that. They're definitely one of the, the better options. Survivable. The uh, Divina says, are these ultra settings? Yes, they are. Uh, Moshe is asking, how big is the difference between the uh, RTX 4060 and RTX 4070? Eric, I think we have some slides for this, right? Later on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we survive. will show you a bit of an overview how it, um, how the relative performance mm. of the 4060 is to, to other graphics. Settings. Are, uh, so frame generation of also apply. AMD. I always do that when I die. Change my <laughs> settings. Uh, so, Mike, y did you pay attention? No, only to the chat. Come on. <laughs> With frame generation. How I many? think it was like, I, what I saw was around 60, because that was the moment that I was surprised. Okay. Now, be that it was so high. And now, so now you switched frame generation off, right? Uh, this, this looks like a benchmark. I'm replaying the whole, the, the same part again <laughs> and again and again and again. Yeah, this is uh, without frame generation but, and with DLSS. So you can already guess that this is not a 4040p game. Okay, just run, not this one. Come on, run, 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 run. Yeah, run, so run. in the scene where I was watching, you already dropped from like 60 to 40, and in this part, you're even slightly under 40 often. Ooh, slight. Hey, now it's difficult to uh, oh, play that part again. Okay, so. And this, this is, is kind of the thing where you will see a, a difference number? between. 40? Uh, yeah, just 40 is okay. This is where you will see a bit of a difference between the 3060 and the 4060. Uh, because with the 3060, you will not have that frame generation available. So your FPS, and it's also mm. a well, bit seems lower I have than this to one. Go back again. So your FPS will be relatively low, yeah, where you can still bump it up a bit with the 4060. Uh, settings. So what I'm going to do, DLSS off. No, not DLSS. Um, yeah, DLSS. Where did they put it? Where did they put the LSS? So now we're making it even more intense. Low. So no DLSS, Apply. ray tracing enabled, ultra settings. And low large checkpoint. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So these will not be settings that you can play with this card, I would say. So maybe my aim will get better at, at low <laughs> FPS. Have more time to, whoa, holy moly. This is a slideshow. Yeah. Nah, not playable. So uh, I'm, I'm going to write down 15, Mike. You can. Uh, this is not playable. Yeah. I can switch uh, uh, ray tracing off, but you said I need to reload, right? I think 15 was like the very bottom, but like 20 max probably. Uh, okay, I'm going to do 18. That's yeah. Okay, 20. That looks better. <laughs> oh no, not that. Uh, not not Two that feet. 20. But still, well, I would say way too low for a comfortable playing experience. So if you want to play 1440p, um, I would say it's it's quite doable with even on ultra settings with ray tracing on, as long as you put both DLSS and frame generation on. Okay. Personally, I would switch ray tracing off and go for higher frame rates. Uh, ray tracing off? Yeah. 4040p. Are we sticking to ultra settings? Yeah. Well, well, I think so. Speedrun. And how about DLSS and frame generation? Uh, uh, off, off. Okay. So this looks promising. Already much more playable when you switch ray tracing off here. Yeah, let me see if I can. Um, so, one moment. 
too many options. So this is ultra ray tracing off, DLSS off, frame gen off. Um, I'm going to just uh, select them both. This on, quality, apply, uh, a guess. So, so we're directly going to yeah? both frame generation and DLSS. Yeah. What was uh, that's a big jump then? Uh, yeah. What was ray tracing off? Just uh, what I saw was like 40 FPS, if I remember correctly. 40 could be. No, could be. And then this is. I know uh, we're 100% sure. Yeah. Well, too late for that. <laughs> could have been a little bit over 50 as well. At least it looked a lot more playable. Oh, damn you. Yeah, scenario close to 100 FPS. This is well playable. So ray tracing, big difference in Cyberpunk if you enable yeah. it. This so way. this is 90? Uh, yeah, even a bit higher, I would say, like 95. 95, OK. Oh, behind me. Skeet ah. says, this card is very meh. I think it all depends to what you're comparing it. Like, if, if you're comparing this to a 4080, 4090, yes, they're definitely way faster. Like, um, and if you want to run higher resolutions with ray tracing, AAA titles, 4060 okay, is not a Can you go to the results, Mike? Card. Sorry? Can you go to the results? Yeah, yes. Difficult without a benchmark. Yeah, that's true. But still, you can see quite clearly where it becomes playable and where it becomes unplayable. Yeah. So in 1080p, basically, it's always playable quite well. 1440p, I wouldn't recommend rate Also depends what you want. Level. I mean, if you want 60 FPS, well, you get it. You got, yeah, you can get it. Uh, if you want 144 FPS, it's a different story. Um. Yeah, you probably you can get 144 out of it if you put the settings a lot lower. Yeah. And this, uh, I think, of course, ray tracing is a, is a big hit, but ultra is also where a lot of people can just put it down to. Shall I do that? NRT says uh, 3440 times 4040, forget it. Yeah, I would say that's uh, that resolution is too high for this card. I would personally oh, go for, for a higher tier card then. 4070 at least, probably. Okay, 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 okay. Just for fun. <laughs> I think that's path racing. Then switch the DLSS off. No, no, no. <laughs> Total no, no. torture test. I think this will uh, do like uh, 10 frames per second or something. Because this, this leans really on the ray tracing. Uh, 42, but that's loading screen. But you have DLSS on. I think that saves you. Oh, it looks... Looks br oh, blurry, but that's the path racing. You can make it harder. Switch the LSS off. Total uh, torture test. Without frame generation? Without frame generation. So this is like basically the <laughs> as hard as you can make it. <laughs> so here you can see, not a chance. I'm going to check if my aim is good now. I have more time to anticipate where they are. Does that mean the card sucks? No. For other purposes it's okay, but not for this one. Maybe if I run, they will not even see me. They don't have the frames to see me. You see, nobody's shooting. Uh oh. Okay, wrong theory. Okay, Eric. Now let's do it completely the other way around. Put all the settings to low, DLSS on, frame generation on, uh, ray tracing on. Uh, resolution, 4040p? Yeah, stick to 1440p. <sighs> settings to low. Steam Deck. <laughs> no, not ray tracing. Ray tracing off. Uh, Set a quick uh, preset on top, you need to Quality switch. here also, ultra performance? Yeah, but uh, change the preset first on top, because it will automatically adjust stuff. So no ray tracing, yeah. Low settings, frame generation, yeah. Uh, DLSS on. Let's put it to performance or something, or ultra performance. Or. Uh, 
and ray tracing is off. Whoa. So this is still 4040p. Yeah. But now you see a whole different frame rate. So you can do a lot with settings. So is this only a 1080p card? No, in many situations you can actually play 1440p even in demanding titles, but you have to fiddle around with settings. And if you want to do ray tracing, then basically oh. in higher resolutions, higher settings. There I exploded. Yeah. Um, Deba Bratas asking, name of the game, this is Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, or flatlined, <laughs> <laughs> in my case. Yeah, Mike, uh, let's look a bit at these results. Yes. So I saw some people already asking in chat, how does this compare to card X or card Y? Um, here you see a bit of the, the graphics cards kind of around the performance of the 4060. So on the very top, you see the 4070, um, and in 1080p, that is 59% uh, faster than the 4060, or 64% faster in 1440p. Um, so it's it's a bit of a difference, but like the price gap is also quite quite big between those two cards. Um, it is indeed a bit slower than a 3060 Ti, as you can see in 1080p. The um, a 3060 Ti is about 10% faster, and in 1440p, uh, it's around 14% faster than the 4060. Um, on the other hand, if you um, take power consumption into account. So if you go to the next one, you see that the power consumption of this card is very, very low. Like these are the tests from Tech Power Up. And in terms of power consumption while gaming, it's actually the lowest card in their overview. So even lower than a 6060 Super and a 3050. So the power draw of this card, like the efficiency is very good. So yeah. even though it is a little bit slower than a 3060 Ti, it does it with a lot lower power consumption. So the 3060 Ti during gaming draws 205 watts, and the 4060 was only 126 watts. Do you remember? Uh, I think uh, Nvidia, when they announced this card, they were teasing the low power consumption as well, and they included the graph or like a, a chart or a table with the cost per country what you could save. And of course, in Europe, the the, uh, the power prices uh, are much higher than the US. Uh, but do you remember what what they could save? Oh, no, I don't know exactly. Hmm. I was reading chat. James Campbell says, this 1080p card at best, you guys should be responsible and tell customers that. I think that's that's a bit too short-sighted. Um, if you play no, a lot of eSports titles... Mike, Mike, I, I agree with him because... Uh, it, it depends on your perspective. Like in the games you would play, yes. For me, easily 1440p card. Because true. I play a lot of eSports yeah, titles. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't play any console ports. What I wanted to say is... Uh, today we, we mainly looked at DLSS uh, titles. Yeah. If you take that out of the equation, the story is a lot different. No, still without DLSS, for me this will be a 1440p card because of yeah, the games for I you. play. Yeah. Yeah. And because that, that, of the, the settings know. I use, because yeah. of the... That's also how yeah. Nvidia sold uh, the 4090 as an 8K card. Yeah, but like for, for Eric, this definitely 1080p card. For me, it's yeah. a 1440p card. So yeah. it, it depends on, on your preference. It depends on the games you play. It depends on the settings you want to play at. Dep uh, yeah, it depends on many, many factors. Yeah. And that's the problem with this, you know. It's not uh, yeah. <laughs> with all those fancy dealers as and then... Uh, also, for me, this card is great because of the low power consumption and the small yeah. form factor. You so like it the builds great in many ITX. Indeed. For Eric, he uses a full ATX card. He has all the space in the world. For a graphic card, he probably wouldn't use a 4060. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, NVENC. Uh, I think that's quite interesting. Uh, so NVENC is an encoding uh, engine. So basically, if you want to convert a video to a different format, if you do that on the CPU, it's quite slow, takes a lot of time. Uh, the quality is quite high. Um, and you have different, um, um, how do you say that? Different uh, codecs for that, like uh, H264, uh, H265, uh, here yep. uh, called uh, HVAC, um, and AV1. AV1 is the latest one. Uh, you see that uh, decoding, meaning reading and then playing the file for AV1, is nowadays most hardware can do it. Uh, either transcoded or, or native. Uh, Mike and uh, me, we talked also before the stream, we were talking about the, the Google Chromecast. So the Google Chromecast 
four play, uh, 4K cannot play it natively. Because that's actually an older version yeah. than the 1080p model. So the HD version, I think they call it. Yeah, the HD and version can it. play it, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So natively uh, yeah. uh, encoded. Uh, but more and more, um, uh, so Mike, you were also talking about this new Intel CPU. The yeah, M like the, the very power efficient one. So you have the, the N series, the N100, and that's uh, um, uh, actually an Elder Lake N uh, yeah. CPU. And that one also does AV1. We talked uh, about decoding. Elder Lake N and this uh, CPU during uh, our complex yeah. live stream, uh, which in a QB. And that one also is doing uh, AV1 um, uh, decoding. So, um, so it's getting more and more common. Yeah. So how can you benefit from this? Uh, either if you convert videos, um, and I'm now only talking about uh, your personal uh, uh, family videos, not the Blu-ray ones. Um, only legal stuff, right? Only legal stuff, of course, of <laughs> course. Um, and uh, of course, streaming, because uh, recently, we will talk later a bit about that, recently also uh, YouTube started supporting AV1 streaming and OBS as well. So. I was trying to find out uh, where this uh, MVENC is located. And uh, on the left you see uh, AD103 AD and AD102. So the bigger one is AD103. Uh, so that's the, the, the RTX 40 series, 4090, 4080 uh, silicon. Um, a bit on the right side, the floor plan is I actually I think the bigger one should be 102, right? It's lower number, higher tier graphics. Oh, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. I switch them around. Um, and uh, GO, uh, GA102 uh, on the right side, that's actually uh, 3090, 3080 Ti, and I think also 3080 yeah. as well, 80. indeed. Uh, so, and here at the bottom, in the red part, or, or pink part, you see NVENC. So, it's only a small part of the CPU. And if you're using this, for example, to playback videos, that's also what NVIDIA is nowadays uh, talking more about, video playback. Uh, power consumption. Uh, so your idle power is about uh, 7 watt for this card. Video playback is about um, 10 or 11 watt. So um, yeah, it's basically idling. And that's because of this de dedicated uh, uh, silicon. Uh, so it's not only the, 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 the video processing, that's the playback, and the MVENC. Um, so we already talked a bit about it. RTX 20 and uh, 30 generations, they uh, did not have AV1 uh, support. I think they didn't change anything. It's basically the same MVENC um, chip or silicon that they put in the RTX 30. Uh, in RTX 40, they added AV1 support. And I think before that, they added uh, 10 or 12 bits uh, in the MVENC, but that was already in the, uh, in the uh, sixth generation. So here is how in, for example, OBS, you can select it. And normally, uh, you will be using uh, software encoding. That's also, for example, uh, a software, I'm meaning the CPU yeah. uh, calculation, so there's no dedicated silicon for it. That's also when we started live streaming, uh, we used XSplit. And in the beginning, we only streamed to, for example, channels like YouTube and Facebook. And uh, with uh, XSplit, the, the, like the competitor of OBS or the alternative for OBS, you could at the same time stream to different channels. So what we did, we uh, streamed on YouTube, for example, on the CPU and Facebook on the GPU. So the GPU was encoding it. Um, nowadays you have uh, dedicated engines and um, uh, we use uh, Restream. So basically we stream one time to Restream and they are transcoding it and sending it to all the different platforms. So way more easy. Um, but yeah, as you can see here in the table, uh, YouTube at this moment is uh, testing both uh, H265, the middle one, uh, HE VEC, um, HVAC, I always call it. Not sure what English, Mike. HVAC. What's the English term? I always call it HEVC, but HEVC. Okay, okay. Well, my English sucks. Could be. And AV1 uh, testing that as well. And that's because you need uh, something new, uh, uh, which they now support it in order to uh, send these signals. Um, and Discord, I think, also supports us, right? Uh, yes. Um, but there was a bit of a but there. I think if you're... There's, this is still better, so yeah. there's always a but. Yeah, because if someone is in the lobby that cannot decode it, I think the encoder will also automatically switch to something else, probably um, AGVC instead of AV1. Yeah, or VP9. Yeah, so it... Um, yeah, there are. Th this is definitely for for many platforms is still very early, and they're still fiddling around with this a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, expect to see AV1 supporting more and more 
streaming and video platforms for sure. Yeah. Uh, this is a table, uh, if we're talking about live streaming, yeah, we already talked some, some months about this. We also need to test it here, but we don't have time and <laughs> we don't have a RTX 40 card. Maybe this one. No, it's also not ours. Uh, to put in our uh, streaming PC. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're, um, we're looking forward to play around with this. Uh, and basically what you can see, at the uh, same bit rate, you can uh, reach higher resolutions, especially with AV1. Um, and that's not our intention. I mean, we, we talked about it. Uh, should we uh, stream in 4K or HDR? I mean, all interesting, but majority is looking at 1080p or lower. I mean, on mobile phones, etc. Uh, but it's interesting to achieve the same quality of stream or maybe even higher. Because now, Mike, what, what are we streaming? Don't, don't look or don't touch any button. <laughs> maybe you'll end the live stream. 6,000 kilobits per second, I think. 6,000, uh, okay. So that will be in this range. range. Yeah. Now we're doing... I think, okay, maybe it's a bit <laughs> too, too low what we're streaming because that will be in this range because we're using H.264 because the other ones are not supported yet. Yeah, it, it, it depends a bit um, yeah. on the platform. On some platforms you can do higher. On Twitch, you're Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Twitter is lower, Facebook is yeah. lower. Well, Facebook It could be that we're doing a higher okay. bit rate to YouTube. I'm not sure, actually. No, no, we just send out one bit rate. Are you sure I cannot check during the stream? No, because uh, <laughs> I remember one time somebody needs to <laughs> needs to push a, at the, a, 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 change the scene and it pushed at end live stream. So <laughs> was that you? No, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's maybe switch to the um, to the capture. Yeah, indeed. Um, I'm going to put this away uh, because. I, I will uh, do some encoding. So this is a video. We also make some product videos. So this is Raf talking about, uh, I'm just going to skip it. Is audio too loud? Please let us know. Because then we can, is, is there even audio? <laughs> I don't know. I don't see any audio. No, there is no audio. Okay. Now you, you guys have audio. Yes, anyway. let, me, oh, let me turn this down a little bit. That will be too loud probably. Oh, then I keep it at 100%. You control the audio. Yeah, this should be better. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I'm just going to switch stuff, doesn't matter. We're not talking audio today. So anyway, we make these kind of product videos uh, for a YouTube channel. And uh, this one, for example, it's, uh, um, it's uh, 178, let's say like that. And this is H264, basically. Uh, I can show you that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. How do I show you that? Uh, what is it? I even don't know how it's called. I hate Windows, this, this, this start menu. Uh, Divina is saying in the mainstream, people yeah. have H.264 encode and decode on most devices, but large companies like Netflix, Amazon, YouTube will push towards AV1 to save bandwidth. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because it's, yeah, it's a more efficient codec. Um, also, if they want to, for example, Twitch, you have a lot of gameplay videos, of course, there obviously, gameplay streams. Um, and if they want to push for um, uh, higher frame rates as well there, it would be very nice if you could have like 144 FPS support on Twitch. Um, then you will need to get that uh, bandwidth from somewhere to, to make it as efficient um, to run this properly on the service they have. Um, so their AV1 could, could definitely be an outcome. But of course, enough devices have to support it in order to make it viable. Yeah, so uh, talking about this movie, uh, it's about, uh, I think it's about one, mi oh, one minute, one and a half minutes, let's say like that. 170, uh, 177 uh, megabyte, 178. And we are not going to look at the audio, uh, but uh, if we talk about the video, 1080p, 16 per 6 uh, megabyte bitrate, which is really high. But when our uh, Robin, uh, I'm sure you saw him one, one or several times in the live stream, when he's uh, rendering a video, he's doing this, of course, in a high quality, uh, because all the other platforms and, and actions will only lower down the quality. So uh, you can see here, um, let me see, uh, H2. Oh, this looks already... No, you see, MPEG-4. Yeah. So, um, handbrake. So yeah. with handbrake, you're basically going to convert it using AV1. 
So this handbrake, uh, it's a 90 build uh, to support AV1. So if you download the stable version, you don't have the AV1 support? No. I'm having a bit, okay, so uh, removing subs, uh, audio, I'm going to pass through. So basically we're not touching the audio, uh, it's not about that. Okay, so here I'm in a menu where you can uh, do all the uh, quality settings. Uh, basically I'm going to keep the uh, same um, uh, uh, frame rate uh, as our original video. Um, we're first going to do AV1 uh, uh, software, maybe 10 bit. You have 8 bit and 10 bit. Uh, basically, so this is the software encoder. Uh, basically, uh, 10 bit is higher quality uh, and smaller file size. But it takes longer. So, same of if, yeah, quality uh, 36. This is how you uh, can determine the quality. Um, there are some, uh, how do you say that? Recommendations for it. I'm now using just 36, but it will be a bit difficult because in different codecs you cannot uh, compare the same quality uh, with each other. So 36 in AV1 is not the same as 36 in HEVC. No. So no. now this is the Q. So you see, it's 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 uh, now uh, converting this video. Is doing this in. Um, what is it? 46 frames per second. Oh, it's hard to read for us. <laughs> I know, so I can lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but later we can uh, blow this up. Enlarge it. At the same time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add uh, AV1 8-bit. Same quality checking, setting, add a Q. And I'm going to add one with NVENC. So that's this NVIDIA encoding engine, 10-bit. The other one was also NVENC, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the first one which is now running is software. Add the Q as well. So just to make this clear, by the way, this is encoding that it's currently uh, doing. I'm going to change the file name. So this would be uh, AV1 NVENC. That's maybe a bit better. Add Q. Then I'm going to do... Um, so you can already see that it took quite a while with the software version. Yeah. So basically you're doing that on the CPU. You see the hardware version? This is on the GPU. So this is on the, the, the NVENC. Yeah. And you see that the, the speed is, is a big, big difference. Yeah. So this is the 10-bit. The average FPS for the software and CPU was 32 frames per second. Do I read that correctly? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I can uh, make a snap snapshot of how it's snipping, snipping tool. And like 8-bit, 300. <coughs> I think this can uh, zoom in, right, in Windows 11. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's easier to read. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Your Gee, drawing dear. skills? Yeah. <laughs> like this. So the top so one is the CPU. <laughs> Uh, so top one is CPU, so file size is only 20 megabytes. So it is very efficient. It's very efficient, but the speed is really slow. So yeah, uh, yeah uh, you can almost not do this real time, depending on, I mean, this is a, a small clip, 1080p, depending on, of course, the quality settings. So then we go to and 8 And usually bit. Eric's uh, family videos are tend to be between one and a half to two and a half hours. Depends. But then this will take a long, long time. <laughs> Depends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then 8-bit, uh, so this is NVENC. I didn't put it here, but this is also NVENC, and this is NVENC, and this is CPU. Like that. CPK. Okay. <laughs> what? CPK. <laughs> Mike, 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 Mike. CPU. Perfect. <laughs> like that. It's live. Uh, so this is 27 on 8-bit and on 10-bit it's uh, 26. So it's a bit smaller. Uh, the speed dropped quite a lot. 354 FPS versus 251. Uh, but yeah, it delivers a, a much better speed. But if you're going to compare this, it's a big file, uh, of a file size difference. 
And, uh, yeah. But still, if you compare it to the source files next to it, it's still only around 15% of the size of the source yeah, file. So original was 177 of 178 megabytes, now we're talking only about 20 and 26. So Can you open one up to see the quality? Oh uh, yeah, which one? Um, let's play a little bit of all of them. It's, uh, it, of course, it, it's, oh, can I not open two at the same time? Hmm. But for me, I know the, the quality settings for, for this, you almost don't see any, uh, uh, visually, you don't see any quality difference. Um, there are programs, you can measure this, uh, VMOF, I think it's called, uh, there are mul multiple, but they are command line in Linux, so yeah, I mean, I know a bit Linux, but <laughs> I don't like the command line. So, uh, and then uh, this program is basically calcula calculating between the original and the converted one what the, what the uh, perceived quality difference is for humans. Uh, so companies like Netflix um, and, and uh, multiple others who stream everything digital, they also need to compress everything they have, um, uh, for example in AV1. And they still need to get a decent quality level. Probably Apple as well. I uh, don't know what codec they're using. Uh, Apple TV. Um, but of course, you want a high quality. And, and they have uh, like uh, uh, 4K, HDR, a really good quality if you look at, watch it on your TV. So, but still, they need to have this compression. So, yeah. Is audio on? Yeah, no, audio is off. Okay. So, yeah, I mean... It's very, very difficult to, to judge. You guys are now watching the live stream compressed. So that's, um, yeah, very difficult. Eric, can you run both of them once more? And then we can take a look at the power consumption where you do it in software and when you do it on the NVENC. Yeah, that's what, what I want to show you as well here. Um, uh, let, me, let me convert another file. Skis asking, what does Disney use? Ooh, I don't know at this point. Uh, let me uh, just uh, start another one, Mike. Um, Gina says, I believe AV1 is royalty free, which is another big yes. reason the video platform is yeah. not adopting it. Yeah, Absolutely. that's also a very nice benefit. I'm going to override one. Yeah. Yeah. Now you see, the video encoding engine is taking care of this. So on the left, you see it's running, but it's almost finished. So it's like one uh, between 165 and 170 watts it consumed at most. Yeah. Uh, but you also see that 3D engine is getting a little bit of uh, usage. I'm not sure why and how. And it's also uh, 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 funny or strange that video decoding, if I uh, play one of these clips, it's not showing any, uh, any uh, um, uh, usage but instead of it's played on the 3D engine. So I'm not sure if the, uh, I just downloaded the standard uh, uh, VLC. I'm not sure if this is one of the settings. Oh, maybe in Windows you also have Could like, who yeah. Mike, you know where that is? Like use hardware accelerated Ooh, GPU? I don't know in Windows 11. I, I use Windows 10 still. But you know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? Uh, graphics. There is a, so we should uh, call it <laughs> change default graphics settings. I think, oh, this is it, what I was looking for. So it's already on. Uh, maybe if I uh, uh, throw this in the window, uh, what is window, what is window? Open with media player. Okay. Okay, there is the AV1 extension. <laughs> so it recognized that it's AV1. That's a good thing. This one is for free. If we get it. New codecs are uh, supposed to support features like HDR and uh, deeper color depths. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, I think you can also... Well, I don't have a source file which uh, supports that. Um, uh, color space. So here you have the, 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 the different color spaces. Uh, so HDR. 
Are we already there? Waiting for Kodak. Where was I? In the Windows Store, right? Oh my god. Did they cut off our internet connection or something? I think so. AV1. Oh, that's not the one. AV1. Give me for free. Get. That's the one you were getting. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. But that's the one you should also have. Get. Pending. Starting. Wait, what? It said something about Windows 10. Ah. Oh, this one is also an update available. Let's do it. And, and this one as well. <laughs> oh, everything. You need to update everything. Oh, Disney. Somebody ask about Disney. <laughs> Can you maybe convert uh, one of the files on the software version? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I can. Um, uh, AV1? Yeah, so AV1 on the CPU. 10-bit, uh, 8-bit. Um, what did you just do with... 10-bit. Uh, okay, then do 10-bit. And anything else or just play? No, just the same to see what the power draw does. It will uh, override it. Oh, no, it just puts one behind it. See, the power draw was first like between 165 and 170. It's a bit higher now because you see, you're CPU, the CPU. It's maxing out and the yeah. GPU isn't doing anything. So this is where you see the CPU. Yeah. Saying like, okay, I'm busy. And the GPU. Oh, this one, chilling. sorry. The GPU. So the encoding engine is at 0%. Yeah. And this is just to, to, to show you windows and then, uh, you know, uh, move the screens around. Oh. <laughs> It's busy. Yeah. yeah. So power draw, if you're doing it through the CPU, is also a bit higher than when you would do it on the GPU. And of course, the GPU is much, much faster at it. Yeah, you see this. So basically, yeah. it's much more efficient. So 246 FPS in the previous one. And now it's like doing around 30, a little over 30 FPS. I think uh, we're not getting this uh, AV1 extension, so we cannot check if Decoding Why is works. this? Oh, it was on pause. <laughs> it was paused the whole time. Nah. <laughs> okay, installing. Okay. Me with my uh, with my uh, aimbot uh, fingers. <laughs> so now it should work, right? Uh, well, what I want to try. Let me first finish this one. Okay, finished. Uh, what I want to try is uh, play one of the clips. So this one also got, got an update. Uh, play one of the clips uh, in the um, uh, media player, hoping it would use the, the, the decode engine. But it's not. Oh, yeah, it, it is. does. You it see? does. The load is very low, but it, yeah. it does use it. Yeah. So um, maybe now, because I uh, installed the plugin, uh, if I play it in uh, VLC, it's doing it as well, but uh, I first need to stop this one. No. Okay, so uh, probably there is an option in VLC somewhere. Michaela is also asking, does Video Alone have AV1 plugin? I think they should have by now, but maybe it's still in the... Pff, yeah, okay, uh, you know where, where to find it. Um, Input codex? Yeah. Render on CPU, nah. But we may also have an older version of VLC. This is quite an no, old no, no, installation. No, 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 I downloaded it today from the website. You got the newest one? Well, the latest one. Kay. The newest, I don't know. But stable or beta? I'm not stable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got one from the website, so... Um, but yeah, I need to find out where, how, what. Is this AV1? No, I don't think so. doesn't have a lot of... Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, you you see that uh, uh, NRT th says VLC four will have AV one, and this is version. Okay, there you have it. Possible. Would surprise me that they're behind, but uh, and uh, maybe they already have a beta four. I don't know. Could be, could be, could be. Anyway, I think that's it, Mike. Let's maybe do another giveaway. Maybe do two. That's a good idea. Then uh, you can announce what uh, we're going to do, us two again, next week. <laughs> yeah, so uh, finally the time is there. Uh, are you going to build on me? We can let the chat decide. <laughs>
Oh no, no, because Chet, I decide, always dude. lose. Because <laughs> I hope I damage things and I drop so things. So we're going to build I... a Project Zero system with the cables on the back of the motherboard. Who yeah. do you want to see build? Do you want to see nah, me or do you want to nah, see Eric? Nah, 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 I don't. I'm saying Most next week. We will do. <laughs> 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 Already choking. <laughs> ah. And we have our next two winners. I'll make it bigger for you, Eric. Uh, I cannot read. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay, uh, first winner uh, with the loyalty bonus. Thank you, uh, Master Low. Of yeah, Master Low Master. And the second winner, also with loyalty bonus. Um, Asian Venom. Asian Venom. Yeah. Congratulations! You both also won a Steam Wallet code. So congrats again to all winners. <coughs> While Eric uh, continues to choke, <coughs> let me see. I oh, know. NRT, Eric, no, of course. No, Emperor, no, no, Eric. No. Why? Uh, Why you Alan guys says, hate Eric, me? I want a good laugh. One dark man, oh, Eric. No, 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 no. Mike, I think it's your turn because. Tommy I, says, I vote Eric. I did your annoying hey. small mini ITX build with my fat lovely. fingers. It was lovely. It was lovely. And people liked it so much to oh. see a struggle there that you will be the person building the system next week. Well, anyway. I'm sure you will enjoy it. <laughs> Hey, the how audience has voted. How <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. How difficult could it be? I mean, it's it's just... Okay, uh, Chad, remember this. How difficult could it be? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, maybe some people in chat know I uh, I did one blindfolded. But that's like uh, two years ago or oh, something. Oh, that was like a 10-hour live stream. <laughs> that was, no, no, not 10 hours, but it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, next week, Eric will build this. <laughs> Make sure to be here. Same place, same time. Thank yeah. you for watching today, and goodbye. Goodbye. Not happy.